Coming up on City Spotlight, we continue the second half of season nine and we're back on location in Neoga. We'll talk Neoga schools with the new superintendent of Neoga schools, Kevin Harmon. We'll talk to Kevin about his first year as school superintendent. Kevin will share some of the highlights and accomplishments of this past school year in Neoga. And we'll have an update on the latest facility work to Neoga schools. We'll wrap up this episode on Neoga with a feature on student athlete, Jack Finney. We're back on location in Neoga for this latest episode of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location for this episode, back in the familiar spot, the Neoga School District offices, and we welcome back to the program a familiar guest, the uh, new superintendent of Neoga Schools, Kevin Harmon. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Great to have you back. The new title there as we taped last spring with, with Kevin and former superintendent Bill Fritcher. So you've, you've, you've moved along there to that superintendent's title. And uh, let's start right there as we tape here on April 24th with Kevin. How has the first year gone leading Neoga Schools? It's been very, going very well. Um, I've got to give a lot of credit to Bill, our retired superintendent, in our school board for hiring me almost an entire year early. Um, that, that, that time of working with him has just been tremendous. I've had a lot of, a lot of work under my belt in regards to budgets, uh, tax levies, audits, grants, uh, other day-to-day -day, uh, you know, uh, activities that you know, I got to do a whole year in advance. Um, so again, just kudos to our board and their forethought I'm thinking ahead. Um, as I approach the end of my first year, it doesn't really seem like it's the end of my first year. Really, it seems like it's the end of my second year. Right. So, so that's really helped with that transition. Um, we've got an experienced and professional staff here at Neoga that just really works very well uh, with each other, with our admins, our teachers, parapos, cooks, bus drivers, secretaries. Um, we truly share the same goal um, and just doing what's best for our kids here at Neoga. Um, again, that makes my job easier. Mm -hmm. I got a great admin team, uh, Jennifer Bridges, our uh, junior senior high principal, Jordan Bear, our elementary principal, and Mike Taylor, our dean of students and athletic director. They just have their buildings moving in a tremendous direction. They handle their jobs, they handle staff well, kids well, parents well. Right. Um, again, uh, allows me to focus on the bigger picture that a superintendent must do. And, and again, they're making my job easy when you got great people like that. And then I got to thank you know, our other area superintendents. We've got a great group around here. We've got some tremendous leaders in our community that are leading these schools, school districts. And uh, they're always willing to answer an email, a phone mm -hmm. call, a text message, you know, when a rookie like me is asking for help and advice, and, which is often. So, um, but again, we just got some really good people around here. So it's, it's, it's made my, my job, this is my first year, much easier and the transition right. a lot easier as well. We talked. A year ago with uh, Kevin and Bill, as I mentioned, and we talked about that transition. I've been fortunate to uh, tape a few times here on City Spotlight and other communities where we've had this transition where you have the outgoing superintendent and the, the incoming. You're obviously someone that's been here and you, you just named off that entire support team. And it is a team effort to yes, accomplish everything. You are the figurehead, but it does take everyone to make this work. So uh, from your first year of uh, leading the school district, um, we're taping again here, the very end of the school year. When, when's the last day for the, the semester here for students in Neoga as we tape here uh, at the end of uh, April? Yeah, May 22nd. May 22nd, 22nd. okay. Yeah. This episode at home will be airing around that time. So uh, congrats on making it to the end of the school yeah. year. And let's let's recap the school year here in Neoga. What are some highlights or accomplishments? Well, I'll, I'll just start a little bit about the uh, co-curricular and extracurricular activities, some highlights. You know, we really started off the school year with a bang with our junior high uh, baseball team, making it to state for the first time, I think, since the early 1980s, I believe. That's, wow. Uh, so that was a significant accomplishment. Uh, 
you know, a little more special for me personally because my son was on that baseball team. So, and all of his buddies. But, uh, <laughs> but again, that was that was a, a great great start to the school year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we had some really competitive teams during our our winter sports uh, on the boys boys basketball side, not only junior high but high school as well. And then we kind of you know capped that winter season off with a, another state run by our high school girls basketball team. Um, it ended in the super sectionals this time. They didn't quite make it to state. We lost to a very good Christopher team in the super sectionals down at St. Anthony. Um, but we did set a school, uh, school record for wins, so those girls have nothing, and the coaches have nothing to be ashamed of. What a, uh, what a, what a, what a two year run. Yeah, very, very, obviously the best two year run we've seen <laughs> of any, any, any team here in school history, and I think that's going to be a feat that's going to be hard to, uh, hard to top and match in the years to come. So, mm -hmm. um, Co-curricular side, you know, FFA on our ag program continues to be one of the best in the area, uh, winning many district and state competitions, uh, placing in state in many, many events, uh, national events as well. Our kids just do a tremendous job with that, and Cody Carmen, our ag teacher, is just amazing. What he can do with those kids is, is truly amazing, um, so kudos to him and all the hard work that he's putting in, all those kids put in. Our fine arts and our performing arts programs have had successful concerts uh, mm -hmm. this year, shows, uh, individual achievements as well. Um, that kind of kind of uh, capped everything off at the end here with a, with a great musical. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Wettenkamp and her team uh, performed Into the, Woods. Into the Woods. So it was it was a great, great musical. Um, so I just want to thank Megan Harden, our art teacher, Rebecca Nail, our band teacher, and, and Amy Wettenkamp our music teacher for all their hard work. So we have the uh, spring band course concert coming mm -hmm. up here mm -hmm. and then the spring sing. So we'll, we'll finish the year off strong in those areas. And then uh, our spring sports are, are obviously very active right. and we're very competitive in, in all those at this time. And we, we feel like, you know, particularly in track, we're, we're gonna hopefully send some kids to state and track in both high school and junior high. So that's on the co-curricular and extracurricular it's side. A lot, it's a lot of fun to hear about all yeah. those uh, activities outside of the classroom. I've yes. uh, been talking a little bit more sports here on City Spotlight. That's kind of my passion in life is I love I love watching and rooting for sports and uh, and, and, the, and the arts. Uh, it is musical time of the year. My, you bet. Yeah. All, all school districts are having musicals and I played in the band as a, as a kid in Charleston so it's great to hear about all those accomplishments uh, throughout the year. What else? So uh, curricul curriculum wise, uh, this is the first year of our updated math curriculum uh, in our in our school district. Uh, we had changed to a Savas math in uh, K through K through five, and then we stayed with the Glencoe math. Um, just updated our, our textbooks and some of the curriculum uh, six through twelve. So um, I think we really start hitting our stride in the middle of the year in the, in the math programs, um, as, as as evidenced by our um, interventions and our progress monitoring. So that was uh, that was very good to see. So we'll see. Hopefully those 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 positive trends in, the, in that area continue. Uh, we continue to refine our elementary and junior high intervention programs. Mm -hmm. We feel like those are top notch in giving kids additional support um, for kids that struggle, and then those those students that also need that extra enrichment. In fact, we've actually had a few schools already come in and, and want to kind of serving to some degree as a model for some of that okay. for some of our some of our area districts. So we've had some folks come in and and visit and or just make phone calls and inquire about what we're doing with our kids and. I got to give a lot of credit to you know obviously to our building principals and then our intervention team um, that w that we have to, to help these kids out. Uh, for next year, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be offering for the first time an EMT class. Okay. So our wow. we're going to have I think six or seven students that are taking an EMT class, okay. and they will be able to. And we're partnering with Lakeland College. We're also partnering with. Um, our uh, Neoga EMT service here in town, wow. and they're going to uh, supply some f some funds to, to get that cost down for our kids. But when they walk out of that program, they'll have yeah. an EMC, EMT certificate. So that's an area, like a lot of, lot of areas, that yeah. people are struggling to, to get people, and, and yeah. this is an area that's much needed, obviously, and, and we're going to try to help out in that regard. So pretty excited about that. Really want to give a shout out to Jennifer Bridges, our junior senior high principal, for making this happen, um, she she started you know started down this road and mm -hmm. and uh, she's pretty much not taking no a, for an answer. So. What a tremendous opportunity for the students of Neoga to to be able to learn and for the first time, which I, I remember a first time class when I was in Charleston. But EMT learning that sounds like something you maybe would learn in college, but they're going to learn it here before they yes. leave high school. 
Yes, absolutely. And they're going to get college credit for that as well. Awesome. As I said, we're going to partner, partner with Lakeland College. So it's a win-win all the way around. Wow. Um, and if you can, and, and like I said, we're getting uh, the Neoga Fire, or, uh, EMT service to help fund some of that. So, you know, that, that's going to uh, put that cost down for our kids. So again, we're going to have six or seven kids that's going to walk out with a EMT certificate. So that's that's some great news for, for, for our kids. Um, we'll be updating our social studies curriculum over the summertime. So okay. our kids will be introduced to some new social studies curriculum as, as we come into the into the next school year. And that's all part of, of I think we may have mentioned this in previous interviews, mm -hmm. we're a PLC school. Um, so we're able to, to be very collaborative and very systematically approached mm -hmm. to, to making changes like that. And, and so we have a rotating schedule of when we know what specific uh, you know curriculum and core subjects that we're going to be talking about and discussing on on a yearly basis? So, so again, we continue to make those those improvements because we have that PLC time to do so. Always great to talk with superintendents across our area, from one taping to the other, and you know time elapses. I kind of mentioned this beforehand. Facility work, always little things going on, and in a lot of some of these communities that I've taped with recently major changes and so what do you have going on in yoga moving forward well i think the last time we spoke um, we were discussing our facility needs mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. both in the junior senior high and at the elementary building and we also discussed how i believe our school board was positioning ourselves to put a referendum on the june ballot right well i'm happy to say that we did put it on the ballot right. and we our, our voters thought the same way we did that it was needed and uh, overwhelmingly, actually, it was about a two to one vote. So it Fantastic. passed by, by about two to one margin. So that means the next two summers, we're gonna have a lot of uh, facility work being done in, in the school district. So essentially from June uh, through its passage, and then I started July 1 of last year officially, right. Pretty much been working on facility work with wow. our with our architect uh, Andrew Ewing, who works right off the through, bat. right off the bat, who works at Upchurch. So, um, so this summer, um, and we've just approved some 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 bids uh, for that first round, our first stage of construction, which were, were some very good bids, we thought. Um, so the first stage is a new roof and waterproofing on the elementary school. Mm -hmm. So which is just next to the to the yep. interstate. Mm -hmm. um, if you drive by it, you will see it still says Neoga Middle School. So <laughs> yeah. um, it, that's actually our elementary school now. And between getting the roof replaced and then waterproofing, the signage up there will now reflect okay. Neoga Elementary School. So Very good. Um, that'll be one area that, that people will definitely see uh, coming into the next school Very year. Very visual. Very visual. The roof, not so much. Much, much needed. It's over twenty but, some year old. But you twenty gotta, some year you gotta olds, keep the top you gotta, Yes, you gotta you gotta make sure that it doesn't leak. So but they will definitely see the signage, the waterproofing, the painting and so on. And then the junior senior high, which I think is probably gonna be even a bigger task over the next two years. Uh, we're gonna re renovate three of our science labs, all three of our science labs. So two in the high school wow. and then one in the junior high, so complete gut and renovation. Um, two of our uh, bathrooms that we have for, for our students, uh, we're gonna re renovate those. Uh, our library is going to get a renovation, and then half of our tile uh, in, that you see in our corridors, and, okay. and, and, and that will be renovated, abated, and then renovated uh, this summer. And then the other half will happen the following summer right. with the lobby, the cafeteria, and then our main restroom. So essentially, mm -hmm. we're going to take out all the tile um, you know, and asbestos wow. that we have in that building over wow. the course of the next two summers. So it's a very big project. Yes. We haven't seen a project like this in, in many years in Neoga, so it's 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 a pretty big deal, and we're very excited to see what it's going to look like when it's all done. Those first things that you listed off, the science labs and other things that are going to get the initial work on, um, how will that will that be done completely over the summer? To will, will it impact students next school year? So uh, our plan is to have it completely finished to start the school year Ooh, next year, which yeah. is a, which is a tall a tall task. Mm -hmm. um, you know we. We feel pretty confident that we're going to get it done. We are we're going to start some of that work the last week of school when students are still here, right. um, and then we will then we will uh, hopefully be able to get uh, you know get to get a good start on yeah. that. We we wanted to start in our science labs and our libraries because that's got the biggest impact on kids. Yes, um, we could have started in the lobby, which more people are going to see yes. year one because they're coming into our facilities mm -hmm. with. Uh, extracurricular activities, but we wanted to make the biggest impact with our kids right away. Um, and again, you know, that's all moving towards creating an environment, learning environment that's, you know, a 21st century learning environment for our kids. So, um, so yes, the, the goal is to have those completed, the library completed for day one of, I think, August 16th of, of next school year. There we so. go. It'll be here in a blink of an eye. Yep. 
All right, so we're, we're catching up with Kevin and Neoga Schools here at the end of the school year. Uh, when I get to the either beginning or the end of the school year, I kind of like to put it, whoever I'm talking to, your thoughts on the end of the school year. What does the end of the school year mean to you, Kevin? Well, it, me it means a, a lot of hustle and bustle, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, springtime with, with banquets, uh, we always, as a principal, I used to joke that it's a fried chicken dinner season, you know, as, 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 as you would get to all these banquets and awards, which, which is a really special time for our kids because we get to really honor and recognize all their hard work mm -hmm. um, throughout the school year and, and our staff as well. So, so it's, it's an exciting time. Um, it's all, it's also can be a stressful time because it's like, it's like a race to the end, right? And we're yes. cramming everything in. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you always, at this time of year, you always are able to reflect on the school year in general. And I've always felt, you know, in my time here, whether it's as a teacher or coach or now or principal or now as a superintendent, right. um, I've always been able to be proud of the work we've done. You know, our staff has done and, and no, this year is no exception. Very, very proud of our staff, our kids, our community. Um, you know, as I said, uh, probably previously that, you know, I live here, uh, my kids go to school here, right. and uh, this is a place that I think, uh, you know, we just, we feel very proudly of. And, and again, we just thank our staff and students uh, for making this a place where people want to come and send their kids. Fantastic, great comment there to kind of summarize the end of the school year. Coming up in our next segment, we're going to have a feature on one of those student athletes, uh, Jack Finney, at the time of taping, uh, an eighth grader here in Neoga. Jack is one of many talented student athletes in Neoga. Um, I have a feature that I've taped uh, on Jack and uh, encompasses about four interviews. Uh, as I was getting video uh, of Jack uh, in action, I ran into Kevin at one of the uh, track meets at Shelbyville there. You have, obviously, you mentioned you're a student athlete you have in your household. Um, Want to give a kind of a lead in of uh, who Jack Finney is, maybe from your perspective. Uh, you certainly know a lot of these kids very well. Um, mm -hmm. For our audience at home, before they see a little bit of this feature on Jack, what can you tell us about Jack Finney from your perspective? Well, as you said, Jack's an eighth grader here at Neoga. Um, what, what makes Jack so unique is he's got one, one hand. Okay, so on the, his other arm, it's, he's got a nub that is just below the, the elbow. Jack, one word to describe Jack is determined. Um, you know, thinking about having to do an interview with you, determine, determination and Jack Finney go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I said, my son plays, you know, a lot of sports with Jack. Mm -hmm. um, and as parents, we see Jack so much, and he does such an amazing job of overcoming those, that, that obstacle, and he makes such great adjustments mm -hmm. that you don't even notice it. You begin to, to not even, oh, it's just it's another, it's another kid out there you right. know, playing, playing sports. And I think if you really stop and think about that, that's probably one of the most ultimate compliments you can give an athlete like Jack is that you don't even notice that, Absolutely. that, that he's unique in that regard. Um, now we obviously have other, other uh, schools when they, when they play us, they, they see Jack and they're just constantly amazed. We are constantly amazed by what Jack does, but you just go about your day and, and you just, you, you see him on a daily basis and you don't think twice about it until you know, somebody else brings it up. Mm -hmm. but, but again, he's just, he's just so determined. Um, you know, I'm sure, I know for a fact that other coaches have probably used Jack as an anecdotal reference at times mm -hmm. to say, you know, I don't want to hear you say you can't do it because if Jack Finney can do it with one, one hand, then you can do it with two. Um, I'm sure that's probably been mentioned more than once. Um, Co so, Co Coach Hacker said those exact words. Okay, and you, well, you'll, hear, you'll hear from him in the future about yeah, that. Yes. So, <laughs> so again, I, I, all the credit goes to, to Jack, and I want to give credit to his parents, Sean and Stephanie, as well, too, for mm -hmm. pushing me, for pushing him, but also allowing him to be him. So right. he's just a special kid. So, a lot of those words that Kevin just said, you'll hear in the a little bit of in the shorter feature. Again, I taped a lot of interview sound with uh, Jack, his parents, uh, Coach Hacker here, who coaches most many sports here in Neoga. We'll have a, the full length feature at the end of season nine of City Spotlight. So I look forward to seeing how it turns out and sharing it with all of you, but we'll have a shorter version with you coming up. It's been great again to get caught up talking Neoga schools with Kevin Harmon, the new superintendent of Neoga schools. Kevin, great to have you on the program. Again. Thanks for having us anytime. Great, great to be here again in Neoga. As previously mentioned, coming up here on City Spotlight, we'll have a feature on Neoga student athlete, Jack Finney. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Neoga.
All right, Caleb. Chuck it. You're not going to hit the ball. I've been going real early. Jude, if the, hey, hey, if the disc comes hurtling that way, I need you to block it. A smile uh, because it's a good relationship that it's hard to, at the beginning. Uh, and the reason I say that is because when I met him early on, he was at a uh, intramural basketball program, and we started with the question uh, when we would do things right-handed. we do things then with our left hand. And Jack would smile at me and say, well, what am I supposed to do? And so that kind of gave you the perception right away that here's a young man who has, uh, you could call it a disability, but I think he embraces it because it makes him special. So that's what I think about when I hear his name. There are people in very tiny, small towns doing great things. And they don't often just do it on their own. You know, there's always a support system behind them. And that is something that we have in the community of Neoga, is a great support system where we just figure things out together. And um, that's what I want them to know about Jack, is if there are any other limb different children out there, they think that they're the only one. You know, you think you're the only kid on the planet with one hand or one leg or one foot or one arm or whatever it may be. You don't see people like you every day at school. They're gonna see that he looks a little different than everyone else. And they're probably going to say, I don't know how he's going to do. Um, maybe a little bit feeling sorry for him, um, but Jack never lets that get him down. Um, there's a lot of people, we've actually had various tournaments and travel baseball where it takes two or three innings before anyone to really notice. Um, he usually plays second base um, in travel baseball and his transfer is pretty fast. And I'll have coaches come over and say, I didn't even realize he had one hand until the third inning. Um, so that always is a testament for me, for Jack, of how well he competes. My name is Jack Finney. Um, I go to Neoga and I'm in eighth grade. So like, for example, when we're in PE, me and my friends are playing basketball games, like, like some of the girls in my class, like they get mad at me because like, it, it's just a game of PE. And I'm like, well, no, it's not. It just, like, like I have to win and it sucks when I lose in PE. It, it sounds ridiculous, but I just hate losing. And even, and even if it's a game in PE, I just, I hate losing. As far as teammate goes, I've not seen a kid who was willing to dive on the floor for a basketball, who's not afraid to mix it up like that. And just the fact that he is willing to take younger kids, I mean, he shows leadership. And, and the fact he's, he has a younger brother with us, and so we, we kind of talk about like, hey, what you do in between the lines and what you do in a locker room, what you do in the hallways at school, those younger eyes are always on you. And so he has kind of embraced it a little bit and like I said, found a niche or a, a, a specific role. Baseball's my favorite by far. I just, um, my dad put me in t-ball when I was like five, so, and this will be the first summer since I was five I haven't played baseball. So I, I just love baseball and I like to get better at it every day. I think he probably gets that from me. Um, I was always very active playing various sports, baseball, basketball. Um, and I think Jack's third word was ball. So he's always had something and always been a part of something and has never really let that stop him from what he's doing with only having one hand. And I think a lot of that is meeting the right people at the right time when he was really young and not letting them, who was, they were older versions of Jack, let that get him down. He was, he's always figured things out. And there's a lot of times we tend to forget that he has one hand. Um, and so, yeah, I think he's, he's always gravitated to doing something. Depending on what the season is, he's always doing something. There you now, bend go. your knees. 
now bend, go. bend. Yeah. Now, now, now get your stuff. Well, at the time, for the past like couple years, we've only had one coach and like 40 kids, and she can't be all over the place at once. So our coach used to tell us, um, eighth graders, you're kind of like the assistant coaches, because like I know there are going to be some kids that don't listen to you, but you gotta like kind of help me out here. So, um, like, there are just some sixth graders that are, like, f freaking out. They're like, what if I don't throw her this far? I'm going to get made fun of. Like, like what I tell them is what, and when you're in sixth grade, you're not going to win out of every single meet. Just go for, like, a personal best. Just get better every single meet. And, like, I just try to, me and some of my other teammates, like, we just try to help them out and just, yeah, we just try to help them out to get better and better every day. A guy that will, when you're in a huddle, will say, hey, I think we can. That's kind of interesting. You know that a kid is willing to speak in the huddle, and that says volumes about. Definitely has gained a lot of confidence over his, in his time here. And, you know, you kind of, you kind of look forward to, I'm in pretty close contact with the high school basketball coach, and we talk about hey, here, here's where you're at, and these are the things that we, we see. And you know, you, you look for someone who's not afraid to, hey, sometimes you, you gotta get a message to the group and you can send it through that guy and he'll find a way to relay the message. And... What I'm most proud of is when people come and say how supportive Jack was, how he was encouraging of a teammate, how helpful he was in this situation, how when there was another friend or student that wasn't in a great situation, Jack kind of stuck up and, and helped them. And I mean, he's, he's not gonna hit all the home runs, probably. Never say never. But, and he's not gonna score 50 points a game. But the fact that he's encouraging his teammates and he's staying positive and he's doing what is best for the team, I think, is the thing I'm most proud of, is that he sticks true to who he is and he never gives up. It could be so easy to give up and he never has and he probably never will. There's a kid who lives like a block away from me. He's like, he's in kindergarten and he has the same disability as me. He has one hand and um, I, I would hope I'm a role model for him because I know like if he's ever like having trouble he can talk to me cuz obviously his parents don't know what he's going through and like like that's something he's he's lucky to have he has someone like 30 seconds away he can just go down and talk to whenever he needs to City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.